You want to go in your house? I know they're probably like, oh, y'all popped up in here super quick. Hey, Beautiful Magic. Hey, RJ Supreme. Troy is in the house. Shamar is in the house. Hey, y'all, what's really going on? What's happening? What's happening? So, this was a busy weekend, y'all. Why y'all let, um, hey, KK. Why, why y'all let um? Why y'all let Kanye uh do all of that? Why y'all let Kanye go out here and act the fool like that? Kanye out here talking about um. What's wrong, Kanye? What's wrong, sweetheart? Okay, for one thing, let's just get this out of the way. Kanye has already said that he is bipolar. Okay, and a bipolar person will do anything. It ain't no telling what they will do. I have worked with many a bipolar person in the facilities where I used to work. If you don't know, I used to be a counselor for people who were going through, uh, for adults who were going through drug rehab, and for just children, when I was working with kids, it was kids who were in the foster care system. But I've worked with some kids who were bipolar. But the adults who have bipolar are much worse. It's actually easier to get a child to take their medication than it is to get an adult to take their medication. So these type of things, uh, you know, uh, actions that uh, Kanye is exhibiting is classic bipolar um, behavior. Kanye yesterday, I guess it was in North Carolina or somewhere, uh, did a rally where it just took a weird turn. One of the portions, and I keep telling you guys that Kanye has been very, very hurt by his childhood. So one of the portions of his talk got to the point where he literally was crying because he said that his father didn't want him. Kanye is a person that has a lot of unresolved issues with his dad and his mother. And it's so sad to see this play out in front of the whole entire world. Like he basically said, his father didn't want him. His father, I guess, wanted his mother to get an abortion. And then he went on to say that he basically kind of asked Kim to get an abortion with their first child because he was out here living the life of a rapper and he wasn't ready to have a child. And I really thought that, you know, they made it seem on the show, but that's the show. I knew 
knew this was going to happen. I knew. As soon as I started talking, I knew my husband was going to come home. I knew he was. I knew it. I I got husband radar. I felt it in my spirit. As soon as I start talking, he going to come home. Now, he ain't called and said he was coming or nothing. As soon as I get into the conversation, here he come. Watch, he come in all loud and everything. Watch, watch, watch. I knew, I knew it. I just sat down here like 10 minutes ago. I said, watch, watch. Watch what? Watch he come home. I ain't even, I've been on here five minutes. So they made it seem like on the show that, you know, this baby was planned and they wanted the baby and everything. Come to find out, Kanye didn't even want the baby. Kanye then got on the stage, honey, and crying and was like, I almost killed my baby. I almost killed my baby. I almost killed my baby. My daddy didn't want me. Why y'all let Kanye do that? Why y'all let Kanye go out there and embarrass himself like that? But see, the thing is, when you're bipolar and you're manic, you're not embarrassed. He ain't going to be embarrassed until he get on his medication and really see what he looks like. Because he ain't embarrassed right now. People probably telling him what happened today or he's looking at that and he's like, I did that. That's how bipolar people be. He probably sat up and watched that last night and was high-fiving himself and all his imaginary friends and was just having a good time. He And his imaginary friends was probably telling him, blood, you went out there, you told them. I'm not even going to get on the part where he got into it with the young lady. I'm not even going to get on that. I can just imagine the conversation that he was having with his imaginary friends on the way home from that rally. And they was telling him how good he looked on stage and everything because that's how bipolar people be. Where you going? Wash my hands. <laughs> that's how your mania will have you believing that everything you did was okay. So he got in the limousine and his imaginary friend sat next to him and was just telling him, oh, you killed it. They love you. We can't wait until you do this again. And he was like, yes, I did that. They told him, you, you did that. And he was like, yes, I did. He probably went on and told his wife, I killed it in North Carolina. Because his imaginary friends then boosted him up. That mania then got him so excited. He don't even realize that he was out there crying and, you know, the big eyes and looking crazy. And he had, did he have some kind of symbols carved into, I don't even want to talk about that hair. I don't know what's, what was going on with his hair because the video that I saw was like really dark. The video that I saw was really dark. The audio was poor. Like they didn't have no mics or nothing. I'm like, I'm a 55 year old woman sitting at home in her bedroom and I have mics and lights. And it, like, I, you could have called me, Kanye. I would have did your mics and your lighting if you had paid me enough money. I would have showed up there and, and did the sound and the lighting for you because the, the lighting was horrible. But honey, when he got to Harriet Tubman, when he got to Harriet Tubman, I know his imaginary friends was like, all right, you going too far now. You doing too much, dude. Shut up. Stuff. Don't say nothing else by area of me. And what is so crazy, what is so crazy to me 
is you 20 somethings. I every time I see some of y'all 20 somethings on Instagram, I just want to just go through and slap all of you. They were saying, well, he told the truth. She didn't free the slaves. She just took them from one white person to the next. They he she just took the slaves from one plantation to another because they were still working for white people. But do you not realize that the slaves were not getting paid? Slavery is different. So if that's your mindset, that she took them from one white person to another, then you're a slave now. And that's what they were saying in the comments on Instagram. I'm like, Lord, please deliver us from, what is it, Generation X? I don't know, millennials? I don't know which one it is. Well, I don't know where y'all 20-somethings fall. I think y'all Gen X. Deliver us from these folks. Because one young lady was, was saying, well, if you work a nine to five, you are a slave. I don't know if they, you know, just have not done any type of reading or don't understand what the what slaves really went through. The fact that slaves couldn't read, they couldn't write, they couldn't go to school, they could they couldn't even have their own kids. Girl, I'm pretty sure if you're able to use your cell phone and you have Wi-Fi, because you had to have something to make that comment, you're not a slave. Now you may be stupid enough to have a slave mentality. Because there is a difference. Some of you do. Oh, we got a package. Some of you do still have slave mentalities, but you're far from slaves. Now, I can tell you some stories. I was born in 1965. And when I look at that situation, like I barely missed it. My mother who adopted me was born in 1917. Okay. Now, she was born free. She was free. But there were certain bathrooms she couldn't go in. There were certain hotels she couldn't go in. She only went to the sixth grade in school. Her school was at the church. All of the, all of the little kids went to the church house for school they had to walk to school my mother said she didn't really you know have real contact with white people until she started working for them but she was free nonetheless so y'all idiots have no clue what slavery was you're not slaves. Just because you're ignorant does not mean that you're slaves. Now, you may have slave mentality because a lot of you still do have slave mentality, but you're free. That's the difference. Our ancestors weren't free. And Harriet Tubman did everything that she could to get people away from the beatings and lynchings and free labor just because they went from one place where they had absolutely no rights under containment of white people to a situation where they were working for white people and get, at least getting paid and being able to live somewhat decent does not mean that they were slaves because the majority of you now work for corporations that are owned by white people. But you're getting paid. 
you can get up at two o'clock in the morning and go to Starbucks, not, not Starbucks, because Starbucks will be closed. Starbucks closed at like seven, child. But you can do a donut run. Before Corona, you could go anywhere you wanted to go. One, two o'clock in the morning. I mean, now we can still go to our, our favorite uh, donut place. It's a little hole in the wild place, and the people make the donuts there. We can still get up and go to the little donut spot. Two o'clock in the morning. We are free. Now, if your mind is in shackles, then you go right ahead. When you have a baby now, you can leave the hospital with your baby, not thinking that the slave master is going to come to your house in the middle of the night and take your baby. Our ancestors didn't have that type of freedom. Yes, there are a lot of other things still going on. There's still police brutality and, you know, black people are still not making the, the same money that white people are making. It's, we still living in the ghetto and all of that stuff. But all of that, we still free. Okay? We're not slaves. We're not. Now, we still going through some shit, but we free. There's a huge difference between what we are going through now and what our ancestors went through. Every now and then, depending on where you live, you may run up against one of them crazy old white people who still have that ignorant mentality. But at the end of the day, you can cuss them out and not have to worry about going outside in, in the Ku Klux Klan rolling up on you and dragging you down the street behind a horse. So you free. Nick, black men, you can have as many white women as you want. You can marry her. You can do whatever you want to do to her now. But you couldn't do that. You couldn't even marry her back in the day. You bet not look at her. You you bet not make eye contact with her. You couldn't even do that. Now you can run up on her, ask her for her number, call her, go to her house, meet her family, have a baby by her and everything else. But our ancestors couldn't do that. So don't talk to me about freedom. When I, I feel like shit, I was barely born free. In the 60s. The 60s, we were still going through some shit. I was just a baby. I didn't realize it. And I was one of those little babies I didn't even know. I was one of the little babies that was eating with the Black Panthers. My mama used to take me to get the free lunch, the free breakfasts and stuff with the Black Panthers. I grew up with the Panthers, power to the people. I lived in West Oakland all my life until I got older. And then we moved to East Oakland. But I lived extremely close to the, the beginning of the Black Panther Party. I used to go to the Black Panther headquarters to get free breakfast and stuff with all the rest of the little black kids. So I didn't, you know, grew up during some difficult times, but I was just really, you know, in the 60s, I was born in 64. So, you know, the 60s, I was a little kid. Like, I didn't really know what was going on, but you know, that was during the time when the revolution was going on. We was out here, afros, and <laughs> there is the cutest picture of me. Um, it is packed up now. I got on a little fur coat, some little go-go boots, <laughs> some little bell-bottom pants, and a cute little shirt 
and uh, I think my aunt, they said my uncle had took that picture. And honey, I was standing there. I couldn't have been no more than four or five years old. And I was standing there and you <laughs> you couldn't tell me nothing about myself. And that little fur coat, honey, and my little uh, go-go boots, little white go-go boots, little white fur coat. I mean, they had me styling. I was I've always been dramatic. You can tell me nothing. The 60s was the bomb. The clothes was the bomb back then. So Kanye, you know, made his statement about Harriet Tubman not freeing the slaves and got into it on stage with a a uh, black young lady who has uh, since, of course, released a video, you know, saying what happened. After he berates her, he allows a white young lady to um, speak and he hugs the white young lady. So, of course, people are now saying that, you know, Kanye doesn't like black women and is disrespectful to black women. <laughs> Somebody is playing it on the air now. I don't know what's going on with his hair. I can't figure that out. I don't know. Look. Oh, maybe it says 2020. He has 2020 shaved in his head. Okay. So, um, yeah. You know, the only thing I don't want people to do is to blame his wife. She can't do nothing with him. Because if she could, she would have did it by now. Kim has to be extremely embarrassed. That's why she's not saying anything. It, it don't look like she was there. I, I don't think she wants to have anything to do with what Kanye is doing. She can't stop. You can't stop a manic person from being manic unless you take them to the hospital. Kanye needs to be in an inpatient treatment facility. That is the only way that he is going to get some help. He needs to be in an inpatient facility where they can get his meds right and his imaginary friends can stop talking to him because they out here telling him, go for it. Do it. You can do it. 2020, you're going to be the president, dude. You got this. We're going to be here with you. We going to support you when ain't nobody else going to support you. I mean, they probably keeping him up at night, talking to him all night long. I have had bipolar people who will stay up all night. This this guy told me one time that while he was manic, he didn't took his whole radiator apart in the car. He didn't he didn't know nothing about cars and Stayed up all night and took the radiator apart and dismantled the car. And then the next morning, he couldn't figure out how to put it together and didn't even realize, remember taking it down. Kay said he does not embrace the black woman as he, he should, being that he came from one. And the thing is, he loved his mother. I can tell he loved her. He loved his mom. But um, let me tell her because she's gonna call me right back. He loved his mother. I really do believe he loved his mom. And I really do believe that grief was the start of all of this. 
sometimes these type of mental issues are triggered by events in your life, traumatic events. These mental, you know, you, you can you can snap mentally by traumatic events in your life. And for him to have lost his mother, not had a relationship, obviously the relationship that he wanted with his father. Because he was, I mean, he was booing. My daddy didn't want me. He didn't want me. I was like, huh? What you say? My daddy didn't want me and I almost killed my baby. I almost killed my daughter. I was like, oh my God. We are witnessing a total mental breakdown. I don't know. Did he say he was hearing voices? Uh, I don't know, Kay. But he, I can imagine he is. I can imagine that them voices are telling him, you doing it. Keep going. You got this. And we are right here with you. Yes, he said his father wanted his mom to abort him. He said his daddy didn't want him. And that's got to be hard to deal with. You know, like his parents should never have told him that. I don't know if they told him or he just assumed that because he didn't have a relationship with his dad or his dad could have told him. I ain't want to have nothing to do with you. Your mama the one wanted you. I ain't want no kids. Your mama wanted you. But he shouldn't have never told him that. Kay said, Kim somewhere shaking her head and saying he off his rocker today. I can almost guarantee you he has not taken his, he's not taking his meds. He already said in an interview that those meds make him fat. And when he gains too much weight, he gets insecure. And a lot of psych meds do make you gain weight. They stabilize your mood and they make you hungry. And you're eating and you're not moving around as much because, you know, they, the, the, I guess the mood stabilizing component, you know, relaxes you and it kind of brings your, you know, your energy level down. So, of course, if you're eating more and you're not moving around, you're going to gain weight. I mean, he had a complete meltdown on stage in front of everybody. So, Moth Mama said, I couldn't hear what he said to the black woman. Okay, so the black young lady said, that her question was regarding gun control in the U.S. And she said, instead of Kanye um, answering her question about gun control, he kind of, you know, went off on a tangent and started talking about himself or whatever. And so she, I guess she was, you, she was on the stage with him. And I guess she was like, well, you going to answer my question or whatever? And he could hear her in the back going, you know, saying stuff like, I guess she was like, okay, this is not making no sense or whatever. And he must have heard her and he got mad and was like, you know, basically, how dare you? you know, say anything while I'm up here talking. Oh, you trying to be another, you trying to be like that guy on TMZ. Is that what you want? Is that what you want? I mean, he just like went off on her. And so she had her, her mask on and he was like, you talking all this mess and we can't even see who you are. And she pulled her mask down like, what? It's nothing. I'm right here. You can see me. 
And then he just, you know, kind of walked away from her. It was just a weird exchange. It was childish. It 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 was it just made him look stupid. But the whole thing, he Kanye looked crazy. And I don't like to call mentally, um, especially when a person themselves have come out and said that they have a mental illness. I don't like to call them. Oh, and he called the girl Sister Soldier, which was a put down. I don't like to call people crazy. You know, people that I know have a mental illness. I don't like to call them crazy because that is extremely derogatory. This man is mentally ill. And we have to look at him like he's mentally ill. And I know that in the black community, we have a, you know, we have an issue really looking at our own people and acknowledging the fact that they have a mental illness. We just, oh, well, that's my crazy cousin or that's Pookie. He just act like that. No, Pookie has schizophrenia or Pookie is bipolar. You know, Pookie is a mentally delayed or Pookie is autistic. You know, we have issues with labels, but some of these labels are real. And we have to really acknowledge the fact that Kanye needs to be on his medication. And I want I, I want to say this one thing. Let me get this right. And and I'm not being mean here, but I really think that this goes ties into um what if I This really ties into, um, okay, so the other day I said, the spirit of suicide is trying to take over right now. Please be aware depression is the first sign. I need us to come against this spirit together. This is our assignment. I need y'all to get ready to start praying. And um, someone in the comments of that post said that they took their mother's um, depression meds away from her and threw them away. And I was so upset at that comment. But, you know, I tried not to, you know, show my upset. Black people, y'all got to stop doing that. Because mental health is real. This is the reason why a lot of us commit suicide and do a lot of these crazy things. Because we don't want to take the meds. We don't want to admit that we have a problem. Because we have put such a stereotype, a negative stereotype on mental health that we're not helping ourselves we're scared to go to therapy i ain't talking to nobody can't nobody help me if i can't do it myself it can't be done these are people that are trained to help you they are trained to you know of course they're not going to give you all of the answers for your life but they are there to help guide you in a direction and help you to see things a little differently and sometimes put you on a medication that can stabilize your moods, your anxiety or whatever. Now I'm going to be 100% transparent with you guys. I have been on mood stabilizers in the past. I have been through um, times in my life where my hormones were imbalanced. I was going through a divorce and it was just so much stuff going on in my life that hell I needed to go to therapy 
I've been to therapy. I've been on mood stabilizers for a little while. I did gain weight. Um, I didn't, you know, I didn't like the feeling, but I did take them for a while until I felt like I had kind of got things under control. We all go through periods in our lives. Women, when we're going through menopause, our moods and, and hormones are all over the place. Now, it's easy for some of us to deal with it. I feel like me going through menopause now is much better than what I was going through in my 20s and 30s dealing with my moods. I had a lot more problems then than I do now. Um, you know, like I don't feel like I need to be on any kind of meds or anything. But if I did, I would not be afraid to go to the doctor and get them. We have to take that stigma away from medication and going to therapy and getting help. And the reason why I posted that was because of Tamar. Braxton. They found her unresponsive, I think, Friday. And they think that it was a suicide attempt. You never... And to the young said she took her mom's medicine, you were dead wrong. And depending on what the age your mother is, that can be considered elder. Because if her doctor recommended that medication, then and you didn't approve of it, you should have went to the doctor with her and had him change the medication, not threw her medicine away. You do not have the right to do that. You, you don't. That's abuse. Your mother has the right to take the medication that her doctor gives her. You don't have the right to throw her meds away. And, and that's wrong. You shouldn't have did that. I, I mean, I didn't agree with all of the medication that, you know, my mother was taking. My mother was a uh, uh, I had arthritis and they were giving her, you know, different meds or whatever, but it was up to her to take them or not. I would never go into her house and throw her medicine away. I didn't have that right. I just don't. <laughs> so I'm hoping that you get her some help and let her deal. Who's is that? Who's is that? It's got my name on it. So I saw the UPS when they came. So, I mean, I hope your mom gets some, some help, but um, that was a bad decision and it was a wrong decision because if the doctor prescribed something for your mother's depression or anxiety and then your mother does something to hurt herself, it's your fault. It is. It, it is definitely your fault. Give me, oh, give me that smile. Oh, smile. You know that's mine. Stop oh, playing. Smile. Stop playing and give it to me. It, that would definitely be your fault. Because the medication could have helped her. And you threw her medicine away. Uh, this is so clean. we need to, we definitely need to take that stigma away from um, medication and therapy. You know, group therapy, I went to group therapy. Group therapy was fun because 
you sit there and you know you're in a group it's a group of people and everybody is sitting down talking about what's going on with them and after you didn't listen to three or four of people talking about that situation you'd be like well you know what my problems really ain't that bad i ain't that bad oh, it's interchangeable too. I, I enjoy group therapy like one-on-one therapy you know you, you got to get used to the therapist but group therapy i would be sitting there to myself laughing at the not laughing but yeah kind of laughing at um other people in the- <laughs> going through <laughs> and then you know i would leave there like well you know what my life is really not that bad it could be a whole lot worse but you have to do it we really have to get out of that I am gonna hurt you. I'm gonna hurt you. No, babe. No. It don't even fit you right. It look funny. It that look girly. That look like a purse. No. I was laughing. I ain't gonna lie. I would be because some people would come in there, like some of the stuff that they would say at group therapy. I would not be able to say around a whole group of people like some people don't care about their problems and to me those are the best people the, the ones that can really come there and be like you know what is this is this is this and just come right on, right on out with it mm-hmm. those are the people that really want some help it was the people like me that's you know guarded and you know i'm only gonna tell you a little bit you're only going to get a little bit of help. You got to be honest about what is going on in your life, especially if you're having thoughts of hurting yourself or hurting somebody else. And see, that's the thing with Kanye. People are saying, well, why is Kim not locking him up or why she ain't put... It's hard to get an adult committed. If he's not talking about hurting himself or hurting somebody else, they can't just lock him up. And if Kanye is just going off the cuff, saying, oh, weird stuff about, you know, ah, she ain't free no slaves. Ah, my mama didn't. He can say that all day long, as long as he doesn't talk about hurting himself or hurting anybody else. They can't do anything to him. Because he's not breaking any laws. He just sounds crazy. That's why you see the crazy people in your neighborhood who be walking up and down the street talking to themselves. The police lead them along because they're not violent. They're not trying to kidnap anybody. They're not running up in stores, stealing stuff. They're not committing any crimes. You can talk to yourself all you want. You and your imaginary friends can have tea parties every day, all day long, as long as you and your imaginary friends don't kill nobody or hurt nobody or say you gonna hurt somebody. Y'all can sit up and drink tea and crumpets. You can set a table for 15 people and you the only person there. It don't matter as long as you don't do anything crazy. And I think, I think Kanye knows that. They can't do nothing with me. I ain't trying to hurt nobody. I'm crying about my daddy and my baby. I ain't touching nobody else's baby. He ain't hurting them kids. He ain't hurt his wife. He ain't doing nothing crazy. They can't lock him up. And he knows that. He's not that crazy. If you don't put my thing down, will you go back to work, please? Because you're doing way too much. You are being so irritating right now. Did you eat the beans? Mm-hmm. Was that That's, That's what I thought. I was, don't do that in here. <laughs> <laughs> Go there. You know, see, you you don't make things Go out there. Uh, kosher. You just blast out. Don't do that in <laughs> here. Don't do what? <laughs> They don't, doing anything. they don't know what it is. Don't, Dang, do that, don't come in here acting crazy. Shoot. And see, I ain't say anything. This is nice. Yeah, I mean, Kanye can be out 
out there is acting as crazy as he wanted. And I think he knows that. He knows that he can say whatever he wants to say. They cannot do anything to him unless he really does something stupid. And I don't think he's going to do that. I think Kanye is all talk. He ain't trying to hurt nobody. Because if Kanye was really in a position where he was trying to hurt Kim or he was trying to hurt them kids, she would have been got rid of him. So he ain't doing nothing. Kanye, Paul baby, he uh, he just his brain. He he all mixed up in the brain. Paul thing, he just confused. He he in a he in a state of confusion. Is that where you just got paid? Just got paid. Friday. Will you go back to work, please? Is that as long as it'll go? Because I don't want it all up under my titties. Yeah. You know, like I don't want it to be sitting up under there. Like holding one of them up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can you not do that laugh? <sighs> okay, y'all. <laughs> We didn't got all off the subject. Let me show y'all this blanket that I purchased. I went out and bought. Why are you gonna pick up that blanket? I'm not. I'm gonna. Why you think I got the box in here? I bought this twenty pound tranquility. Can y'all say it? Tranquility weighted blanket. What does it say? It's twenty pounds at. I don't know, y'all. Right there. All over. Twenty pounds. This is the blue cool technology. What does it say? I didn't even. I didn't even look at the um box. It says it applies deep calming pressure to your lower body, your full body, your neck, or shoulders. That's pretty cool. Okay, so it says it's suggested for adults who weigh more than one hundred and seventy-five. Babe, do me a favor. Pass me the blue one. What blue one? The blue blanket. It says it's suggested for adults who weigh more than 175 pounds. So you don't smother. Or for those who prefer a heavier weighted blanket. Now, let me tell you this. If you weigh 120 pounds, this ain't the blanket for you. Because you're going to get up under this thing and you ain't going to be able to get out. I'm telling you now. Because I slept in it. I slept under it last night. And in the middle of the night, I got hot. And I was trying to kick the thing off. I was trying to, you know, get it off me. And I don't know what happened, but I swear to God, I thought I had had a stroke. Because I'm so used to just, you know, throwing the blanket off me, in, you know, in the middle of the night because I do get hot. I couldn't move the thing. The thing was so heavy, I couldn't move it. And I was like, Lord Jesus, did I, did I have a stroke, Lord? What's wrong with me? My hands and legs ain't moving. Jesus, I can't get the thing out from oh Lord. I, and then something clicked in and was like, that's the weighted blanket, Lashana. I had to literally sit up to get out from under that. I swear to God, I thought I had had a stroke in the middle of the night and I couldn't move. The thing was so heavy. Do you hear me? I could not get out from under it. If you weigh like a buck oh five, don't. It says suggested for adults who weigh more than 175 pounds. Believe this. If you weigh like a buck oh five, you're going to get up under this thing and you ain't going to be able to get out. So you're going to have to call an ambulance to come because <laughs> You're not going to be able to roll out from under it or nothing. This thing is heavy. I couldn't even get it off the bed. I just had to get on top of it. It was that bad. But it does make you feel good. 
It says applies deep calming pressure, helps you relax to fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake rested. Cool touch on one side, warm, cozy, plush on the other. Multiple ties prevent the blanket from shifting inside the cover. Now, this whole cool touch, cooling, blue cool technology thing, I don't know about all that. Because in the middle of the night, I did eventually get hot. But I am, you know, a, a woman of a certain age. And I am going through the whole um, menopausal uh, situation thing. So that's what it looks like. That's a picture of it because I can't pick the damn thing up. So I'm not going to, I, I can't show you, uh, no, I ain't picking the damn thing up. But let me show you how I got into this. So I did buy one of the smaller ones. I bought the child's size. And this one weighs six pounds. So I bought this one. Now, I can pick this one up. I can throw this one around and everything. So I did get the child's uh, size one that I'm going to let my uh, granddaughter use this one when she comes over. The other one is an adult size, and it seems to fit. Um, I think this is a king size bed, and it's not quite the size of a king size bed, maybe a queen. It's 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 pretty big. You know, when I get up under it, my whole body is um covered. This one, when I get up under this, my feet stick out a little bit. Because it is, it's for a little kid. But I'm only five three. So um I did like I the six pounds, I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, that's super light. I can go heavier. And so I think they had a 10 pound. I think they do make a 10 pound, but I don't think they have it at, had it at Walmart. They only had a 15 pound and a 20 pound. So, you know me, I'm like, go big or go home. So I went big and the thing is heavy. It's heavy for real, for real. But I like it. It did seem like, you know, when I got up under the thing, I was asleep. But don't think that you're just going to be able to, you know, like if you're used to just kicking the the blankets off of you at night, you ain't going to do that. You, you're just not going. You, you, you got to you slide out. I don't know what I did. I don't even know how I got out. I think I got out. Just got out the bed. <laughs> I think I just got up. It just got out the bed. And when I got back in the bed, I was pulling it, trying to get it on the floor. And then the thing was so heavy that I was just like, forget it. And I just got on top of it. So once you get it in the bed, that's it. You're not, it's just not one of those blankets that you're going to be throwing it around. The thing was $50, too. I mean, I've seen them much more um, expensive than $50. But you have to look at the, I do have arthritis. So um, I'm not the strongest person, you know. Uh, and I do have arthritis in my hands. So, you know, trying to pull it and, you know, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, it, it, it was a little um, trying for me. But my husband, when, when, he, when he put it in the shopping cart at Walmart, he was like, I don't think you're going to be able to deal with this, babe. He was like, this thing is heavy. And I was like, no, when you unwrap it, because, you know, it's wrapped up. Like, they wrap it up to fit in this box. And I was like, no, babe, when you, you know, when we unwrap it, it's going to be cool. I'm going to be able to, that thing is heavy. 
it feel like it weighed 20 pounds. Like, it feels like it weighed more than 20 pounds. For real, for real. I'm going to put it on the scale. No, I'm not. Because I can't even pick the damn thing up. Um, I don't know. It's interesting. I do like it. I do like it. So, please don't take my review and be like, oh, my God, that damn thing weigh a ton. It do weigh a ton. But I did like the way it felt. I like the way it feels like I'm just like sitting around watching TV or whatever. I've always been the type of person like it could be 90 degrees outside and I still just like the way something feels when it's on me. So, I mean, I really like it. But, you know, when you put it on the bed, just be prepared to leave it there or let your husband or, you know, or, you, you know, you're probably stronger than I am. You know, it, it may not be nothing for you to move around, but it is a bit much for me to um, move around. So my husband is just like, okay, if you don't want it on the bed, when you get up in the morning, just tell me and I'll, you know, move it um, wherever you want it because I ain't going to be straining, um, trying to move that thing around, okay? So we are still walking and my husband ordered me this little bag thing so I can have my bottle water and my cell phone in here when we're walking. I don't know what this thing is called. I think we ordered this from Macy's. Oh, it's called the Urban Light Sling Bag. It says the TSD brand is bold and embodies a down-to-earth and lively spirit. The TSD brand is classical, contemporary, and iconic. The natural material provides a raw look and genuine feel. So it's just a little bag to put my water in. Um, put my water and my cell phone in when we go walking in my inhaler because uh y'all do know i have asthma so sometimes i like to um take my inhaler when we go walking because we walk at the park so it's just got a little strap and it's a little uh, nice size will fit a water uh, bottle perfectly in my cell phone and that's it so we've been trying to do a mile a day um, I have not so far been able to reach the 10,000 step goal. I haven't reached it yet. My husband is having no problem reaching his the 10,000 steps because he works and I ain't got there yet. It's my plan. I thought you was gone. Almost. Oh. You need that other light. I know. I just didn't. I ain't feel like getting it. Okay. I ain't feel like putting um, all that stuff together because it wasn't my plan that I was going to be here that long anyway. You gone now? I'm gone now. I'm Fix gone. your shirt, child. You look a mess. Um, no, we ain't talking about you, child. We don't even know you. So that's that. Reese's Pieces said, I don't even weigh that. I'd be stuck. Don't get it, girl. Don't get it. Because if you don't weigh 170 something pounds, it says it's not for you. Then you have to get like a 10 pound. Or they do have. 15. Yeah. They, no, they do have a 10 too, I think. I think they have a 10. Um, they have the six pound for the little kids and it, it just keeps going. I just, you know, I'm one of them go big people. 
I just want it. Yeah, maybe you can find one of the um, lighter ones and try that. But, you know, it was interesting when I took my nap today, because I did take a nap today, child. Um, it did seem like I slept better. All right. I don't know. It seems like I slept deeper. You I'm gone, child? I'm in the wind. Hey, if you go to the gas station tonight, bring me some uh, Rice Krispie treats. Yeah, that may not be open. That one might be open. Oh, it's not? It may not be open. Oh. I'll probably swing by there anyway. But we'll see. Okay. Yes, Mo. You all right? Calm down, child. Yeah, th these weighted blankets have been out for a while. And I mean, they've been out long enough for the prices to start going down. Because if you go to places like Bed Bath & Beyond, I, I think some of these are still like $100. And I wasn't about to pay no $100 for a weighted blanket. Now, the weighted part is on the inside. You can unzip that and wash the outer lining and then put it back in. So it feels like it's some type of, you know, kind of like a bean bag thing on the inside of it. That's what it kind of feels like, you know, some type of kind of bean bag material or something. Little Mama Bruja says, I weigh 110 pounds, and I bought a 25-pound one. Yes, it's heavy, but so comfortable. I didn't know it goes weight of the person. Oh, my God. How are you 110 pounds? And dealing with a 20, you must be strong. Because, girl... I'm 200, and that 20-pound one is giving me, <laughs> that thing is giving me a run for my money, for real. Maybe it's because I haven't gotten used to it yet. You know, I just got it like the other day, and maybe after a while, I'll be able to move it around better, but right now, that, that thing is giving me a run for my money, and I'm a big girl. I mean, not super big, but I am 200 pounds. I know I don't look like it. <laughs> yeah, girl, she probably strong. Yeah, y'all be some of y'all do be strong though. The little ones, y'all be strong. It does. It does help. I I really do think it helps with anxiety. Like I do like the way it feels. And once you get used to it, like I have been able to, like turn over, while under it like I can move around under it but it was like just getting the thing off of me and moving it over in the bed and stuff was a problem but I will probably um get used to it in a couple of days but it is heavy you know I didn't realize how heavy 20 pounds was but I should have realized it because my husband has weights and one time I was trying to clean up the spare bedroom and he had the weights in there and I was like god dog these things heavy so I should have realized that yeah I think that's where all of this started is you know, them using these type of blankets for, you know, people with special needs and stuff. And they just started, you know, they just got popular, um, mainstream popular. So I would tell people to try one of the smaller, the lighter weight ones first, and then, um, 
try one of the heavier ones because I like it. I really do. I mean, $50 was like $45 or something like that. I think it was um, well worth it because I do um, sometimes have anxiety and I would rather use something, um, you know, try other remedies than going straight to medication. But if I have to take medication, I'm not going to not take it. If I get to that point where I have to take medication, I'm going to take medication. But I do try things for my anxiety. Like I have the weirdest um, irrational um, fears sometimes. And I really think that um, it will help. I think it'll help me. So we have to pray for Kanye and um, Tamar because it, you know, seems like Tamar is going through a lot right now. You would think with all of the sisters that she has, you know, she would have been able to reach out to someone before it got to the point where she would go and um, take some pills or something, but obviously she could. So, you know, we have to pray for people that are going through these type of situations. We can't look at people and just label them as crazy and laugh at them and make jokes and memes and stuff behind someone that we know is hurting. Kanye is hurting. This man is crying on stage. There is obviously something wrong with him. And it's not funny. It's not. And if we can care about people that are being gunned down by police on the street, we can care about a man who is on stage literally crying out for help. It's bad enough that this man is walking around with 2020 engraved in his head. That's bad enough. But when you get on here crying and can on about you, you, you could have killed your daughter and your daddy didn't want you and like you really crying and, you know, doing the absolute most, you know, it's something wrong with him. And, you know, people saying stuff and I see some somebody said, oh, uh, Kanye is still an attention attention seeker. He isn't that crazy. He is that crazy. Yes, he is. Kanye is bipolar. This man is not just doing all of this for attention. This this is real. He can do a whole lot of different things for attention. This is beyond I'm just doing this for attention. This is beyond that. I don't understand why it is that black people cannot admit that other black people have mental illness. So did Tamar trying to kill herself? Did she try to kill herself for attention? Why do we have such a problem with mental illness? Why can't we just admit that someone is mentally ill. Just because Ta Kanye is an accomplished rapper and has made money does not mean that he is not mentally ill. That man is bipolar. He got some things going on. This is not, he is not just doing this for attention. If he wanted attention, he could do the same thing his wife is doing. He can be taking a million selfies and, you know, posting pictures of his money and cars and guns and all of this stuff that he says he's accumulated. This man is doing things that are extremely erratic. This is not attention seeking. If he wanted attention, he could get attention. 
He has a platform to get attention. What he's doing is extremely erratic. It's not normal. This is totally different from attention seat. So we have to start changing the way that we look at people. Oh, he's just stupid. He just want attention. No. This man needs some help. And until he really does something serious, he probably won't get any help. Because he's not, you know, it's not like he's going to be out here hurting himself or, you know, hurting his kids or hurting his wife. Because trust and believe, if Kanye had ever put his hands on Kim or, you know, hit one of those kids or, you know, did something inappropriate to the children, that would have came out by now. So I don't think it's that. And instead of looking at him and saying, oh, he just trying to get attention. Oh, he just want to... Excuse me. Oh, he just want that. Oh, he just crazy. Why are we not praying for him? Lifting up people need help because it's funnier to make a meme and laugh at him than it is to say a prayer and ask God to keep him covered and to help him and ask the ancestors to come and protect him and lift his mother up and ask her to come and help our child. That's not funny. So we're not going to do that. It's funnier to make a meme and call him crazy and talk about how stupid he looks. That's funny. So we have to stop being funny. We have to start taking some of this stuff serious and look at people in a different way. Look at look at Kanye with your spiritual eye. Like if your mind was to snap today, you will want someone to help you. You will want people to just look at you and say, oh, she's stupid. Or she look how crazy she looks. She running down the street in her drawers. Okay, KK. You wouldn't want that. You would want someone to help you. And I don't want people to blame Kim because this is not her fault. This whole Kardashian curse. The Kardashians are cursing these black men. That's what he did. He should be with the Kardashians anyway. No, Kanye probably had something. You know, Kanye was in a major accident where he almost lost his life right before he got, you know, extremely famous. We don't know if he suffered a brain injury during that time. Something could have happened when he was in that car accident that could have triggered um, this mental event that he is suffering now. We don't know that because we know that his the accident was very severe to where he broke his jaw and everything. He could have you know, he could have triggered a portion of his brain or anything. That could have started this spiral that he is in now. And then losing his mother and, you know, going through all of the grief and guilt and everything. Because I really do think that he has some guilt around his mother's death also because I'm pretty sure he helped her pay for that surgery. 
And if he did, he probably has some um, guilt around that situation. So guilt, grief, we don't know what he suffered in that accident. All of those can be factors of why Kanye is acting the way that he is acting now. We don't know. But we're not supposed to sit around and laugh at him and point at him and point fingers at him. If you're not willing to pray for him and um, uplift this young man, then you shouldn't definitely not be pointing fingers at him and saying how stupid he looks and how crazy he looks and, you know, making memes about him and stuff, especially if you consider yourself a spiritualist. Because these are the people that we are supposed to be helping. You are spiritualist for what? You're not, you're not completing your assignment. You just out here talking. You're doing what the creator told you to do. We're not on this earth just to shine. And show people who we are. I'm a child of Oshun. Okay, well, what did you do with that? So I gave you all of these abilities, and you never tried to help anybody in your lifetime. You ain't never did nothing. I don't want to meet my creator. I don't want to end this life and meet my creator, and he tells me. You didn't do nothing with the gifts that I gave you. Like, you didn't even try. And I know I can't save everybody. But at least I want to be able to say, well, at least I tried to pray for them. I prayed for them. You know, they were on my heart. I thought about them. When they were going through things, I thought about them. I prayed for them. I lifted them up. I lit a candle for them. They may never know it, but I did. I want to meet my creator. And he said, well, you know what? At least you tried. I saw you trying. And you may not have seen the end result but you tried. And if you consider yourself a spiritualist, then you have to try. You have to get out of the mindset of laughing at people and making fun of them when they're hurt. Now, some of the memes do be funny, but you know, I laugh at a few of them, but I move on. I don't look at people like they're crazy. I look at people like they're hurt. I try to, you know, figure out, like, what could it be? Could it be this? Could it be that? So that's what you should be doing also, especially if um, you consider yourself a spiritualist and you want to work with your ancestors and you want to work with the Orishas because the Orishas are not sitting up there laughing at us every time we make a mistake. Our ancestors are not laughing. They don't want to see us hurt. So they're not laughing at us and calling us stupid. That's not how how these things work. So Gizmo did get his bath yesterday. <laughs> he is mad at everybody. Okay. He still got an attitude. He was like, not one of y'all pulled up and helped him get out of that bath. This is the first dog that I have ever had that never gets used to taking a bath. My other dogs, they just dealt with it. Gizmo has a fit almost. 
every time in the bath. And it's not, you know, like we try our best to make sure that the temperature of the water is, you know, decent. It's not, you know, really cold or whatever. We try to bathe him on nice days so he can go out in the sun and, you know, um, run around and stuff. But he don't care. This one was like, I hate it. I hate y'all. Why y'all keep doing me like this? It's, it's a mess. So, po baby. I got over it. He was mad, though. So, that's all I got, y'all. I'm going to... I should do my nails. Because they look a mess. I cut my fingernails because they kept breaking. And I was going to put my little press-ons. My nails look... My hands look so nubby without nails. So, I'm probably going to put my... Press on nails back on. I said I was going to cut my hair today. I'm kind of sick of this hair. I really am. I don't know. That's all I got. Pray for Kanye, y'all. Don't just see somebody hurting and laugh at him. He needs some help. You know, I don't know. I don't know why his family, you know, his family won't, maybe he's not that close to them. Because it just seems like somebody in his family should um, step in and help. But maybe he's not close to his family or, you know, maybe he's just not at a point where he can receive help. That's, you know, usually the thing with people, a lot of people who have mental health issues, they're not in a place where um, they can receive help. I did order some more of these cards from, what's the thing again? Healingcrystals.com. So I ordered the... I think these were the ones that I already showed you guys. No, I showed you guys the animal tarot. So I ordered the um, crystal deck. And I think one of these has the chakras also. Oh, yeah, they do. They have not only the crystal, but the chakra information on here. So, these are going to be interesting also. And a lot of these have crystals that I have never heard of before. So, maybe it will be fun to try to find some of these um, crystals. I've never heard of one. Like, Blue Star Sapphire. It is for the third eye, the throat, and the heart chakra. So, this is going to be interesting. This may... Um, Okay, I'm back, y'all. Um, this will push me. Am I back? Somebody tell me if I'm back. Am I back, y'all? Somebody tell me in the comments if I'm back. Before I get to talking, talking. Y'all still here? Oh, okay. Um... 
this may push me to get some more, you know, some different um, crystals because a lot of these that are in here, like this looks like an interesting one. I know I don't have this. Orange Adventurine for the Sacral Solar Plexus and Heart Chakra. So these may push me to get some different I don't have a I have a moonstone, but I don't have a rainbow moonstone because this is actually a um moonstone uh, bracelet that I have on. These are moonstone crystals. So this may push me to get some different um, crystals to work with. So maybe tomorrow we will um, pull oh, maybe tomorrow we will pull a couple of these and see how um, these deck, decks look. Uh, these decks are on healingcrystals.com. And I think they are $6, like $6.50. And I think it's like 55 cards in each deck. And they're ha having a sale because one of these decks are, uh, was only $2.50. They was having a sale. So... You may want to check out healingcrystals.com. They have a lot of crystals, you know, um, regular crystals, uh, tumble crystals, the the um, other crystals, just all types of crystals, all types. I think they have jewelry also. Um, so, yeah, check these out. I think they were $6.50. I think I have... Oh wait, this is my order. So, my bank. I think that was six fifty. Yeah, six dollars and fifty cents for a deck. Fifty-five cards. That's a good price. That is a really good price. So, check them out. Um. HealingCrystals.com And when I ordered a crystal, I did get a free gift. Let's see if this is the price. No, they were a dollar twenty-five for uh these these were a dollar 25 on sale i don't know how long the sale is gonna last they were 650 and they were marked down to a dollar 25 so y'all better go on um healingcrystals.com and check it out and see if they still on sale child because i think i'm gonna go on and get a couple more they got all they got like I think six decks. Yeah, they have six uh, different decks. So I have two. I have one, two, and six. So I got the animal totem and two crystal decks. So y'all better check it out and see if you, you know, if you like cards, get your own and start, um, you know, seeing how you like it. So that's it, y'all. I have to get off here and take the little fella out to use the bathroom.
they still on sale if they still on sale i'm about to go in here and and probably get some of the other decks while they a dollar 25 i'm gonna go and look i'm gonna go look and see so i appreciate you guys and i'll see you tomorrow hopefully we have something um you know something a little bit, a little bit more uplifting to talk about because late the news, you know, all of the news has just been kind of sad and dreary and, you know, so maybe tomorrow I will do a video about the Orishas or whatever because we haven't um, talked about the Orishas in a while. So maybe, and I said I was going, didn't I say I was going to do a thing on Marie Laveau? So maybe we will either talk about Marie Laveau or talk about um, another Orisha tomorrow. Because I haven't done like a real teaching in a while. We've been talking about, you know, there's been so much stuff going on in current events that we have been talking about that. So I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you so much. Bye.